back. If you're new, hello, my name is Sarah Palmira, and I love chatting about skincare, makeup, and sometimes clean beauty. This week, I wanted to bring you a week of sunscreens. I feel like summer's coming to an end, but we still need to talk about sunscreens, and I have a lot to say about them, as well as some of my preferences, and I feel like I'm learning and learning about sunscreens all the time. So I wanted to bring you a week of sunscreens. Every single day, I'm going to be reviewing a new sunscreen. I'm going to be doing physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens and it's all gonna be the perspective of someone who's worked in the skincare industry and who has very, very sensitive pale skin. <laughs> so hopefully I can bring you some feedback. I'll also be giving you recommendations of who I think the sunscreen would be good for if it doesn't work out for me. And day one, we're going to be dispelling some myths as well, and then I'm gonna be getting into the first sunscreen of our review, which is the Coco Kind Daily SPF 32. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before I get into it, I do want to point your attention to the description box. It will have a lot of studies that I will have cited. I'm going to cite all my sources, including a few creators who I love to watch for information. The main one being Glow by Ramon. He has a full sunscreen playlist on his channel, and he speaks about sunscreen from the perspective of a person of color who can really tell you whether or not a sunscreen's claim about white cast is actually true or not. And I really appreciate his reviews too. So definitely check him out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Myth number one, you don't need to wear sunscreen every day and you don't need to wear it indoors. This is incorrect. You do need to wear sunscreen every day because guess what? Those rays are not going anywhere. The sun still is in the sky, even if it's very, very cloudy. You have to wear sunscreen. It's still going to protect. Maybe you wouldn't burn that day, but you would still be getting all of the damage from the rays. Same thing if you're inside. If you live in a place that has windows, and I really hope you do, the sun's rays are still gonna go through those windows and they're gonna go onto your face and they're going to cause photo aging. And we don't want that. So yes, sunscreen every single day. Confusion number two, how much sunscreen do I apply? Well, here's the thing. Most people are not applying enough. I too was very guilty of this. If you're applying your sunscreen like you would a regular moisturizer, you're probably not applying enough. And I've seen a lot of contradiction out there and my guess is, is it's because we all have different shaped faces. I have a very small face. So for me, probably half a teaspoon would be enough. They also recommend three fourths a teaspoon, and I've seen some dermatologists recommend one full teaspoon. Now there's quite a large disparity in that amount. If I were to use one full teaspoon for my face, I would not be able to spread it in and it would just lay on top. I think the consensus is that everyone has different face sizes and that's why the disparity occurs. But the point is that you need to be applying a good amount all over your face, eye area, ears, and neck. The way I do it is I do the four finger test. This has always worked for me. I take the sunscreen and I pour it a little bit on each finger, four fingers, and that will get me enough sunscreen that I need. Another confusion is the confusion between physical and chemical sunscreens. So a lot of people think physical is organic because that's what the marketing says, but it's not. Technically, it's an inorganic compound. They're both chemical filters. They're both made up of chemicals. Just the physical ones are made up of inorganic chemicals, inorganic compounds, okay? So don't get confused and think that one is more technically natural because it's not. It's just a different type of filter. The other myth is that physical sunscreen works by deflecting instead of absorbing, and that's not entirely true. Physical sunscreen also absorbs the UV's rays and converts it into heat, just like chemical sunscreen. So it's a little bit more nuanced than that. Third difference is texture. So chemical sunscreens are actually really thin. They can be made really thin and with no white cast because of the filters, whereas Physical sunscreens can get really thick and it's very difficult to formulate them with no white cast at all. There's also the myth of sensitivity. Really, it's up to you. Personally, I am more sensitive to physical sunscreens. There's no research that suggests that physical sunscreens are less sensitizing for the skin. So just don't fall for marketing. Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on is reef safe sunscreen. So when this came out, I was really concerned and I've read a lot of studies and articles. I also recommend that you check out Lab Muffin here on YouTube if you're confused or concerned because she goes in depth on each of these studies. But to break them down in an easy way, there is no statistically significant evidence 
evidence in these studies that suggests that the use of certain sunscreens can be harming our coral reefs. Coral reefs are much more likely to be harmed by oil spills, for example, or other terrible things that we're doing to the environment. They were not able to successfully replicate the correct part per million PPM to successfully replicate the ratio of sunscreen to water to be able to make those claims. The only study that did show some significance, and it was one study, was suggesting that in tourist hotspot areas on the beach, where there are a lot of people and a lot of sunscreen, that can cause some negative effects in coral reefs. Ultimately, the decision is up to you, but I did want to tell you because a lot of these reports are very alarmist and there's not enough to them just yet. All right, so Coco Kind, they sent me their daily SPF 32. This is a physical sunscreen. It is broad spectrum, which is very important because it protects against UVA and UVB. And it has some really nice ingredients. It's a very clean company. So this sunscreen is free from toxins, artificial colors and fragrances, mineral oils and sulfates. And I appreciate that. It looks like it has some pretty good ingredients. It has some good emollients, some aloe in here, which is awesome. And it also has some vitamin E. This sunscreen also claims to protect against blue light, but the whole blue light debate is saying that our phones and our screens emit blue light that can eventually cause some aging over time. Sunscreen in general has free radical fighting abilities, which kind of help with this. This sunscreen specifically uses a certain kind of algae and plankton. Now, those studies are really limited, but I will say that some of the things that they have in here are great for fighting free radical damage, which is promising. And now for the little zoom in, I gotta show you my application technique. So here we go. I'm gonna do the four finger method just to show you guys exactly how that works. That is how I do it. And I'm gonna get to town on applying this sunscreen. Now I will say one con about this is that because it's physical, it just takes more time to absorb into the skin. Oh my God, I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder and I look pasty. All right, so I'm gonna just keep blending, but I will say a con is they do take longer to kind of massage in. Chemical ones are just more sophisticated and you don't have to spend so long massaging them. Okay, so off the bat, there's no scent, which is really nice. It applies really smooth. It's very easy to spread. There's no chalkiness so far, no pilling, no difficulty in getting an even application, and it's spreading really nicely, which I appreciate. The only thing is I am looking at myself in the viewfinder, and I feel like my skin is still a, maybe a shade lighter, like a hair lighter than it normally is. And so I just don't know how that would bode well for a deeper skin tone. I'm specifically questioning how ashiness could play a factor here, but so far it's absorbed pretty nicely and I'm not noticing anything overly bad, but I do have questions about the white cast. I just don't know how it would do. All right, so I've waited about five minutes to see how it really absorbs into the skin. I like how glowy I look with it on. The one thing I will say is that I'm noticing a heavy feeling, like a, a heaviness on my upper lip. I almost feel like I'm sweating on my upper lip, so I'm not loving that. We'll see how that goes throughout the day. Another little thing I'm noticing is there's a little bit of stinging right here on the eye crease. Now I apply my sunscreen all over my eye area, especially because that is really an area prone to wrinkles. It's very important to do that. I apply it carefully, but usually I don't get stinging around that area. So we'll see how that goes too, and I'll keep you posted. I'm gonna now zoom you in even more so that you can see how everything's laying, and I will come back after having done my makeup to see how everything wears. Hello, I'm back. I did my makeup and the sweating on the upper lip feeling has faded as has the stinging around my eyes. And I feel like my makeup looks really, really fresh. So let's do a little zoom in so you can see exactly how everything's wearing.
All right, so I've been testing this baby out for the last two weeks, and I'm gonna give it an overall rating. All right, so in terms of ease of application and texture, I would give this product a seven out of 10 because it is easier to spread than a lot of mineral sunscreens out there. There was no chalkiness, no pilling, and no tackiness or patchiness on the skin. The con, though, is that it had a little bit of stinging around the eyes, and I do like to get my sunscreen all up in the eye area as one should, and I also didn't like how it felt really heavy on my upper lip for at least the first 30 minutes and I didn't love that. Now in terms of sophistication of formula, I would say this is a pretty good zinc oxide formula. You get 21% and it is broad spectrum. I wish the SPF level was a little higher than 32 because it does mean that you're going to have to reapply it more and I did like that they included some really great free radical fighting antioxidants in here to give you that blue light protection. Now we're not sure about whether or not it really protects against blue light, but what we can say is that these are great emollients and are great to add to any formula. There was no crazy white cast, but I did feel like my skin was slightly fairer upon application, even after blending. Then I do worry that it could look ashy and it took a while to kind of blend in. I like a sunscreen that's easy, you know, you slap it on and you go. That's just me and what personally I would use. And so I would have to rate it a five on white cast. I think it's better than other mineral sunscreens, but in terms of all sunscreens, it didn't impress me as much as I thought it would. Ease under makeup. I will say, I thought this wore beautifully under makeup. It gave my skin a nice little boost, a nice little prep, a little radiance to it. I felt like my skin was very glowy and hydrated. Now I have normal to dry skin. On oily skin, it might be a little rich and you may need to wait a little bit for it to soak in. I know I gave it a little time too, but I didn't find that my makeup was creasing in any new areas, was oily, was pilling, or had the typical dryness around the nose and mouth or under eyes that I do get when a sunscreen is too mattifying for my skin type. Lastly, for price, this retails for $24 and you get 1.7 fluid ounces. I did feel like if you're comparing it to other products that are at Sephora or at Ulta, it's definitely a mid-range affordable sunscreen. However, when you're comparing it to K-Beauty sunscreen or drugstore sunscreen, which I believe is priced more competitively, then it is a little bit pricey. But yeah, let me like squeeze it this way. So I've been using it for a couple weeks and I'm 95% sure that everything above where my fingers are pinching it is empty. So I don't know how long this will last me. I will have to update you, but I think if you're using the correct amount and enough sunscreen, I don't see this lasting me a ton of time. All in all, I would give this a seven out of 10. I did really like some things about it, how spreadable it was, how glowy it left my skin. I would recommend this for someone who is sensitive to chemical sunscreen. You want an affordable sunscreen, a mid-range priced sunscreen from a very clean brand, and also someone who has normal to dry skin. I think this would be a great base before makeup, and it doesn't do any of that weird pilling that a lot of mineral sunscreens do. If you have combo to oily skin, I might worry that you would feel a heaviness to this product that would make it uncomfortable to wear. And that concludes the first sunscreen. Seven out of 10, those are my final thoughts. I hope this video is helpful and stay tuned for another sunscreen video coming up on this week of sunscreens. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.